All right, so time for Hive Swap Friend Sim, friends and Sims. Let's go ahead and get going here. All right, so last time we finished at volume 16. Uh, there was some weird ass shit happening at the end of volume 16 that made me quite uncomfortable to read and I felt trolled by the game. Uh, boop -a -doop -a -doo. Thank you, Nick. I will have fun with friends, Sim. Volume 17 of Teen and Tech Acerbic. Ah, yes. This is it, fellas. Another night of laughter and camaraderie. Another night of joy and communion with some totally normal teens who would never... <laughs> just kidding, idiot. You are still on Alternia. <laughs> oh my god. You just know one of these miserable chuckle foxes around here somewhere. Waiting for the exact right moment to inundate you with another disgusting dose of friendship. I love how we started out like craving, like intensely craving friendship and nothing but friendship. And now we're disgusted by the thought of friendship. <laughs> what a journey this has been. Who's going to be the author of your destruction on this accursed evening? <laughs> All right, so we've got Daria John Jett and we've got Nikki Moolah. All right, so let's go with Daria first. <laughs> character growth, yay! That's right, a slow burning character arc is what we're on here. Your feet drag as you walk, every limb heavy and slow, and your thoughts are cloudy and dull. Your palm husk is filled with unanswered tasks, un unanswered texts. You feel guilty about this in the back of your mind where real feelings live, crammed together because the front of your mind is too busy being lethargic and numb. Being a bad friend goes against one of the core tenets of your beliefs, but answering texts just seems like too much effort. Man, this is... <laughs> this is a mood. A very relatable mood. You're not sure where this particular malaise come, came from, just that the usual friend-making animus that drives you is still there, but it doesn't feel strong enough to overcome how tired you are of, of everything else. You can't quite remember how it felt to care that much about companionship and camaraderie. <laughs> In fact, right now you can't remember how it felt to care about much of anything. Your thoughts drift to fantasies of driving your car into the uninhabited Alternian desert until you run out of fuel, and perhaps letting the sun have its way with you. <laughs> oh goodness. We're like getting borderline suicidal here. It could be part of that it could be part of that feeling that you've made that you've almost made ah, shoot. It could be part of that feeling that you've almost made all the friends there are to make, and that there's little left for you to do on this planet. It could be weeks of trauma catching up and sinking into de sinking you into depression to protect you from thinking about it all. Either way, it just feels like so much effort to do anything, and you'd sort of welcome Oblivion if it showed up right now to offer its sweet embrace. Your listless walking has taken you to a familiar neighborhood. Ah, the cerulean part of town. You smile as you reminisce, sweet memories peeking through like beams of sunlight through the fog of your apathy. Not far from here is Malik's Hive, with all of its hacking equipment and charming upper-middle-class atmosphere of entitlement and complacence mixed with vaguely socially aware concern. Um, let me make sure I didn't mute the wrong thing. Oh, did I mute system sounds? No, no, that's fine. And though you've only seen pictures of it on Chitter, you know that Ramel's hipster art studio slash hive is also in the neighborhood. And one block over is Ardata's place, which gave you your gruesome and troubling introduction to Alternian social mores. One taught you love, one taught you patience, one taught you pain, or something like that. There we go. Music. This title was too long by James Roach. The full title is Delta Troll Kind Cannot Cannot Get Anything Without First Giving Something in Return. Oh my god. It's Full Metal Alchemist. To obtain something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believe that to be the world's one and only truth. <laughs> oh my god. That's wonderful. Oh, the music is still a little loud here. Let's bump it down some more.
All right. The hive you're closest to is actually Elwards, and as long as you shamble closer, you realize that a lot of I was like, and as you shamble closer, you realize that a lot of other trolls seem to be converging here too. Fishing out your palm husk, you see that the unread message from Elward is an invitation to a party at her place. Looking around you, you feel a flame of your old desire to meet and greet rekindling in your heart. There are plenty of trolls here you haven't met yet. Plenty of opportunities for friendship! The now roaring fire in your belly feels a little artificial, like someone just injected you with friend-making hormones to flood out your regular human melancholy, but you're, but you're not going to complain because this is vastly preferable. As you're walking briskly towards Elward's hive, you spot a troll lurking in the shadows by Elward's back door. Curious, you approach, and when you get closer you can spot the jade green in her outfit. Although there's not much of her blood color in comparison to what most other trolls seem to sport, she, because she's mostly wearing black, and spikes, and black spikes. <laughs> Ugh, it's you. Guess it makes sense you'd be here. You're probably friends with Elward, huh? Whatever. Yeah, you're friends with Elward, but you didn't come here for the but you didn't come here for the party. You're just in the neighborhood. You try to mimic Dar Daria's disaffected slouch. Yeah, it doesn't it really doesn't look that black at her. <laughs> it's true. It's not hard as you can just channel as you can just channel the you from about 60 seconds ago who was very disaffected indeed. From the approving arch of Daria's eyebrow, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, parties are lame. Most parties are, anyway. This one might be cool. Elward's pretty cool. I mean, she seems alright. I don't think she's that cool, I just think her hair and clothes and personality don't completely suck, is all. You tactfully don't comment on the green blush to Daria's cheeks when she's talking about Elward. Oh, she does have a little bit of green blush to her cheeks, like right there. Ooh. Ooh. What's going on here? <laughs> You tactfully don't comment on the green blush to Daria's cheeks when she's talking about Elward, nor the way she keeps glancing at the door like she's hoping someone will invite her in. She's clearly trying to sneak into this party, and doesn't have an invite. Yo, Seth, welcome in! Happy Saturday! When a branch snaps in the bushes, Daria startles and looks around, shiftily. You wonder if she's supposed to be out on her own- You wonder if she's supposed to be out on her own this far from the caverns at all. <laughs> I'm not a baby like Wanshi. So what if I snuck out? The cloister rules are so lame. Branya is so lame. I can't believe Elward used to hang out with her, but I guess if she hadn't befriended Branya, then I never would have met her. It's hard to meet non-Jade Bloods in the caverns. All the time you're underground with nothing but loose eye and grubs and the same stupid Jades every day. It sucks down there. Daria's imitation grubhorn bracelets. <laughs> I'm sorry. Daria's imitation grubhorn bracelets clunk as she folds her arms over her chest. Her heavy makeup makes it look like her eyes are twin black holes, where all sense of fun and caring about things might go to die. She's giving you a marked contrast from how Branya talked about the caverns with the peace and quiet and safety they offered compared to Alternia's surface. And other than that time Lynera nearly killed you in a cave, and that time you were nearly trampled by a rampaging Lucis, you remember liking the caverns. <laughs> you would think that. Don't know why I thought you might be cool. You might be friends with Elward, but you're also friends with, ugh, Branya and Lynera. They're the two most, they're the two most boring trolls on this planet. You can't help but feel slightly defensive of your friends. Sure, Lynera is... Lynera, but you wouldn't call her boring. And Branya is very fond of rules, it's true, but she can hang. Ugh, whatever. This conversation is dumb. I don't care if you can't get me into the party, nothing matters anyway. Just make your stupid choice and get on with it. Yo, non baronary welcome in, happy Saturday! Alright. Um, so here's our first decision point. Let's go ahead and save here. Uh, do we suggest she goes home, or do we party hard? Let's suggest she goes home. 
Thinking about the Jade Blood Caverns has got you really missing them. The quiet monotony, the cute little grubs, the dank air and darkness. You can't think of a better place to lie down and have a depression nap. Perhaps even a depression coma. So you straighten up out of your slouch and tell Daria that, regardless of her opinion on Branya and how cool or lame she is, those cloister rules probably exist for a reason, right? Maybe the two of you can go back to the caverns, together. Ugh. Fine, be a goody two-strep pod in casements. I'm gonna go somewhere where it's not so lame. Lame. <laughs> that was clearly not the right choice. We're lame! Oh no, why are we lame? Can't believe she had the audacity to rightfully call us lame. Alright, anyway, let's party hard instead. Eh, ah, what the hell. It's not like- it's not your job to keep anyone in line. And it's not like you have a great understanding of why even the older Jade Bloods need to stay underground anyway. If Dariah wants to sneak into parties and get into trouble, who are you to say no? Dariah expresses no pleasure at your decision to get her into the party. She just shrugs and rolls her eyes. You shrug and roll your eyes back. You can play the role of disaffected teen with the best of them. <laughs> at this point, we are some sort of cave guard. We walk Jades back to the caves like every week. <laughs> That's not untrue, is it? You take her around to the front door. Hey, you're looking for Hey, you're looking forward to seeing Elward again. When you met her, you didn't have nearly as many friends as you do now, and in retrospect, you know you came off as kind of psychophantic. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could introduce Elward to the new popular and knowledgeable you? As you're walking up the steps, a huge shadow of a huge shadow dwarfs yours. You look up to see Chahut of all trolls grinning above you. Oh, Chahut. Well, hey, little one. I remember you. And who is this new little one you've got with you? Chahut switches her interest from you to Daria, grinning down at her. Daria isn't huge for a jade blood or anything, but she seems absurdly tiny with Chahut looming down at her like that. Her face remains impassive and bored but she scuffs one of her big black boots on the ground and twists one of her spiky bracelets around on her wrist. Cute. Don't see many little jades outside of the caverns. I've always found greenies fascinating. So devoted to the continuation of the species. What a holy mission. Chahut moves slow and lazily like she has all the time in the world and no conceivable reason to rush, and reaches out to pat Dariah's shoulder. She lets her hand linger, one claw resting against Dariah's neck. Ain't it a dangerous proposition to be so far away from your green brothers and sisters? Unless you're hiding something in those pretty veins. A slimy chill runs down your spine. Daria seems frozen to the spot, staring straight ahead at Chahut's bosom in front of her. You think Chahut is joking, but it can be hard to tell with clowns. Their humor is just so much more highbrow than anyone else's. Oh, y'all, we've got Tara here now. Tara's come in to say hi. We've got two fur babies. Look at this popper. Look at this popper. All right, back to the kitty. You boop the snoot. Yay. Yay for booping the snoot. That was a free boop the snoot everybody got there. All right, Tara's, Tara's lying down on the floor now. <laughs> Out of camera range. Anyway, do 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 do. The humor's just so much more highbrow than everyone else's. Just joking. This looks like a good party, even if L word is too blasphemous for my taste sometimes. See both of you little ones inside. 
And then she ambles away, bending down to duck inside the door to the party. You hear party sounds, music and laughter, and clinking drinks, and what could be the sound of someone being murdered, which qualifies as party noise on this planet. Oh boy. Then the door swings shut again, and you and Dariah look at each other. Dariah's heavy makeup can, be, can make it hard to read her expression, but you can still tell that she's rattled. Uh, you know what? It looks like this party is filled with lame conformers. Uh-huh, yeah. All these high bloods that buy into the system and do what they're told, even Elward. We can find something better to do somewhere else. Yeah, to hell with this party. You're down to find your own fun. Especially if that means not putting Dariah in the way of potentially murder happy clowns. <laughs> As you saunter away from the party, you realize that Dariah is looking at you expectantly. Well, you've got this reputation for being an all unconventional and weird and rebellious. Everyone seems to think that you're like totally fucking with the conventions of society or whatever. So you got any suggestions for cool shit to do? Oh God, the pressure. <laughs> God, you've sure felt a lot of pressure to be quirky since word has spread about your manic pixie dream alien ways. It's not like you're trying to be a vehicle for other characters to project onto, assisting in character growth and insight for those around you while your impulse decisions and carefree ways somehow keep you yourself stagnant and forever unchanged. It just seems to sometimes be like that. Anyway, you're tired, and it's daunting to have a punk teen expecting you to come up with suggestions for cool stuff. You have a feeling she's just going to shoot down whatever you suggest. You rack your brain trying to think of anywhere from your many adventures that Dariah might like. Your think pan comes up with zilch and squat, and she's starting to look bored with you. Confessing that you can't think of anything is probably an option. If you want Dariah to be your friend, <laughs> and as exhausted and, and as exhausted and disillusioned as you feel with your socialite routine, you like her and you want to bond. <laughs> Alright, save here. And let's go with, uh, don't know, what do you want to do? You'll tell Dariah that you have no ideas for cool things to do because everything on this planet is lame. <laughs> but she's from here. Doesn't she know of any non-lame places to go? Uh, I told you I'm stuck underground all the time. It's not my fault that I'm literally sheltered and never get to do anything fun. Oops, maybe this is the wrong approach. She seems pissed at you. But then Dariah sighs loudly and uncrosses her arms from her chest. I do know of one place that's pretty alright, I guess. Better than here, anyway. It's far, though. Not a problem. You've got wheels. You were walking around the neighborhood because, well, you felt lifeless and glum, and your car needs alien fuel, which you've been reluctant to ask someone how to get because you don't want to be told that it runs on grub grease or something like that. But now you have purpose again! and you're more than willing to provide transportation in service of your new friendship goal. You take Dariah to your car, parked a few blocks away, and she directs you where to go. You drive through the neighborhood, you drive through neighborhood after neighborhood, through the yellow blood slums where you met Follicle and Cuprum, to the busy urban sector where you had adventures with Tagora and the austere indigo blood enclave where Gallic lives. Eventually, the buildings get sparse, and you think about how you were yearning to drive out into the barren landscape and not die, maybe, but stop. Just let it all end. You don't think Dariah would take you all the way out here just for you both to meet sweet oblivion, but who knows? Trolls can be kind of hard to predict. Just when you think you've reached a point where there can't be any more city or suburbs left, a rubble of massive old buildings comes into view. It almost, it looks almost like a miniature version of the main, Al ah, no, come back. <laughs> miniature version of the main Alternian city that you're used to, except it's all abandoned and mostly ruined. Nothing around here looks inhabitable. Rumor has it that some of the trolls who lived here pissed off the contest. <laughs> Uh-oh. So she culled this whole town. That would have been, that would have been way back in the day. It's ancient history now. Interesting. 
Interesting. Lore! If there were any survivors, I guess they'd either be dead or up in space. Anyway, all these old buildings are kind of sick. There's never anyone else here, and I'm into that. You drive until she tells you to stop in front of a huge, crumbling building. Even though this thing is half gone, you can still tell it's a mall. Ooh, an abandoned mall. This is going to be great. This is going to be super duper fun. It seems a bit different from the mall you visited with Polypa, even aside from the fact that it's totally dark and there's no one inside it. It seems more old-fashioned, a lot more like one of your familiar Earth malls. Every dystopian movie you've ever seen has taught you to be extremely wary of abandoned malls, <laughs> and you feel pretty nervous as Daria takes you up the rickety frozen escalator. It's so dark, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. You're trying not to show your fear because you don't want to look like a wuss in front of Daria. But you can't hold back a whimper when your foot lands on a step that makes a distinctive about to collapse noise. Don't be scared. It's okay, I've climbed all over this place a thousand times, and anything that isn't already disintegrated is sturdy enough. And there's no risk of culling out here because, well, everyone's already been culled. She's gentler towards you than you would have expected, given her cynical and spiky demeanor. You swallow your fear as you reach the top of the escalator, and tell her that it's chill, you just have some horror movie associations. <laughs> Dryah turns and pats you stiffly on the arm. You would never tell her this, but her reassuring manner once she's noticed someone is in distress kind of reminds you of Branya. Nope, but we would never tell her that. Let's not tell her that. It's worth it when you get to the cool part. Come on. Shit continues to be dark for a while, though you see some light up ahead. As you get closer, the hall opens up into a food court, and you see that the light, the light is moonlight shining through the mostly absent roof. And Daria was right. There is something extremely surreal and cool about a decrepit empty food court with the roof caved in. Rubble sits atop the caf sits atop ca ah, pa -pa 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 -pa. Rubble sits atop cafeteria tables and plastic food trays are scattered on the floor and okay that might be the remains of a troll skeleton still wearing a mostly disintegrated fast food uniform which is less cool and makes you remember that this place is abandoned because the condes sent drones here to murder everyone. <laughs> you want to know the weirdest thing about this mall? It seems like actual adults used to maybe work here. That is unusual because the adults usually go off into space. In troll culture, I've gone through a lot of the stores and some of them are for adult sized things. And there's a store for just for like shit the drones bring you now. <laughs> there's army supplies for going off world too. If this ball was for adults, it must be really fucking ancient. Geez, has it really been that long since there were any adults on this planet? Even after all your time on Alternia, that still kind of freaks you out. What must that be like, to grow up entirely without adults? To live on a planet that's nothing but kids? Daria gives you a weird look. Oh, uh, what, what would it even be like to have adults down here too? That sounds way more dangerous and stupid. <laughs> it's not like we're all wigglers. Trolls have to grow out of that mindset pretty fast. People have responsibilities or whatever the fuck, or at least they pretend to. And there's training and stuff for jades where we're basically trapped. Maybe you'd think that a planet of kids would mean that you can do whatever you want, but I've never had any freedom. And I'll have even less as an adult. Cloistered jades aren't even allowed to join the Imperial Army. Instead, we get shipped off to live in isolation. We're forbidden to contribute genetic material to the slurry, and no paling is allowed once we mature for, for I don't know, bullshit fashion, for some bullshit old-fashioned reason that I pretty much don't understand at all. On Alternia, your whole future is decided the second you're hatched. People tell me all the time that I have it lucky as a jade blood, but I don't feel lucky at all. Oof, 
Yeah, you agree with Daria that the future she's described sounds bleak as hell. Right? It's going to fucking suck. And it's so shitty that I have it good. I mean, at least I don't have certain early death in my future, unlike a lot of low bloods. The system is so fucked up and it's never gonna change, and I hate it here. I just want a way out of it. Maybe when you go back to your home planet, you could take me with you? The request comes out of left field, and for a few seconds you just blank at her stupidly. Even with all that angry black makeup around her eyes, she just looks so sad. Sad and lost. They're forbidden, forbidden from contributing to the slur. Does that mean they're going to go extinct? I, I don't know, Hedor Sapiens. That's a good question. Like, if they're not allowed to contribute their genetic material. But it seems like in spite of not being allowed to contribute genetic material, I mean, there are still jade bloods, right? Like, does there need to be jade blood genetic material like contributed to the slurry in order for jade bloods to be a thing? Or or what? I, I don't know. That's a good question. You wish you had a different answer to give her, but you tell her that you can't take her back to your planet because you don't know how, when, or if you're ever going to get home. You've been trying not to contemplate the future because on the rare occasions that you do let yourself think about it, existential dread tends to take over. <laughs> dread, yeah, that's the word for it. The older I get, the more I realize how shitty things are. I try not to think about it, just like you. But it still hits home sometimes, and when it does, I don't feel like... angry. Or rebellious. Instead, I feel completely fucking paralyzed. This, too, is a familiar emotion to you. You feel for Daria, who has wandered over to the middle of the food court, and is staring up through the cave- through the cave-in at the moons. She has her arms wrapped around her middle, and the spiky jewelry and jagged haircut and big black boots don't do anything to make her look less small. You wish you knew what to say to make her feel better. You've done a decent job at cheering up dejected trolls in the past, but it's hard when you're feeling so crappy about your own situation. You mutter something about how things could still get better, you never know what the future holds, yada yada yada. And she looks at you like she knows just how hollow your words are. Ugh, you sound just like Branya. Next, are you gonna tell me how important Jade Bloods are and what an honor all this responsibility is? Give me a break. Optimism is for chumps and losers. Keeping grub safe doesn't matter. The continuation of our species doesn't matter. Nothing any of us do fucking matters. You feel your blood... You you feel your blood getting hot to match the steel that's now in her voice. A sick part of you finds this train of thought a lot more viscerally satisfying than trying to cheer her up, which wasn't working anyway. You stamp your feet, and so does she. I can't believe anyone bothers trying to carve out a real life on this worthless shithole of a planet. There's no point. We might as well all be cold. Yo, how's it going, Twink? Welcome in. Happy Saturday. Yes, holy butts, it's stream time. Holy absolute butts. Give Tara a treat and boop the snoot. Well, happily, Tara is already here. I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll give Tara a treat and boop the snoot after we're done with this episode. But she is actually already in here and lying down on the floor. <laughs> if I had doggy treats with me, I would do it right now. But I have to go up and get them, so... You finished your exams? Yay! Awesome, Twink. Congratulations on finishing your exams. In the back of your mind, you know you should be maybe be disagreeing with some of this, but you're too worked up to care. Maybe Jiraiya's right. Maybe nothing matters. That's fucking right. Maybe I should just quit. You falter in your righteous fury. Maybe quitting is going a bit far. Maybe the high bloods that go around causing death and destruction just because they have they can have the right idea. Uh, this is starting to not sound so great. What doesn't sound great about it? Who cares if I decide I don't want to be a caretaker and instead I just burn shit down for fun? There's no point to anything, so what does it matter? Who cares? Dryas' hands are all are balled into fists and her teeth are bared as she glares at you. 
You open your mouth, maybe to tell her that you care, even though that would probably sound trite, but no words come out. She scoffs and turns away from you and jumps up on a crumbly looking cafeteria table. You know what? Fuck this. Friendship is as pointless as everything else. She picks up one of the chairs and you really need to stop being surprised at the strength of even the scrawniest looking trolls and hurls it at the nearest fast food stall. <laughs> You thought it was just a random throw at first, but it appears that she was aiming with precision because it crashes into a tank of fuel connected to the oven. Oh no. Is she just bringing down the mall on top of us? You're not sure how Alternian cooking technology works, but the stall explodes in a huge green tinged fireball that knocks you on your ass. You watch in horror from your ass level vantage point as the flames lick into the restaurants on either side, explosions happening around the food court like dominoes. Daria stands on her table in the middle of it, unmoving even as fire threatens to envelop her. This is probably the only place I actually like on this whole planet. So good riddance. If it's gone, one less thing to care about. With all the dust and debris, this mall is coming down fast around you. You desperately want to get Daria out of here, but you desperately want to save yourself more. And Daria doesn't look like she wants to be saved. You make a feeble attempt going over to her and trying to grab her around the waist to get her out of here, but she kicks you hard in the chest. Her steel-toed combat boots send you flying, and once again, zero days since you last broke your ribs. <laughs> As used to this pain as you are, it still takes you a second of lying on the floor in agony before you can push yourself up to look back at the food court. A wall of fire now separates you from the tables inside. You can't even see Daria anymore. Your heart sinks. Maybe she'll come to her senses and pull herself up out of danger and escape through the caved-in roof. Maybe she'll get out some other way. You stumble to your feet, half thinking that maybe you can find water or a fire extinguisher in some part of this mall that isn't burning up. But smoke chokes your lungs, and in your panic, your human survival instincts take over. You dash down the escalator as mall infrastructure starts to crumble around you. And you don't want to abandon Daria, but it's all you can do to get your own sorry self out of there alive. Oh no! Oh no, Daria self-destructed. Oh no! How terrible. She died in wildfire. <laughs> All right. We have one more path to do with Daria, uh, but real quick, I'm going to go grab a doggy treat because I don't have any in here and we'll give Tara a treat and we will boop the snoot. I'm actually see if I can point camera at Tara. Well, She's there, trust me. All right, I'll be right back with a doggy treat. Sit. All right, friends. Uh, do 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 do. Hold on. Let's get this pointed at the dog. There she is. There she is. All right. Stand by, please. There's Terry Bear. Hi, right, girl. Morning. All right, there's your treat, girl. There's your treat. <laughs> oh, she's gone off. She's gone away. Oop. Oh, the light's a little low on pet cam. Hold on. See if I can make this a little brighter for everyone. There we go. All right, thank you so much, Twink, for redeeming Give Tara a treat and booping the snoot. 
She says thank you. What a good dog. Tara! Tara! Hey! Look at the camera girl. <gasps> look at her face. Oh, look at her face. Look at that snoot. Look at what a snoot she has. Alrighty. Thank you so much, Twink. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Alright, back to the kitty. Steiner's like, what are you doing? I'm the star of the show. Put the camera at me. Do I have time for a science fact? Uh, well, Bookworm, if you if you put a science fact into chat, I will I will read at least some of it. <laughs> I will if it's if it's many paragraphs, I'll read the first paragraph and then I'll let I'll let chat read the rest of their leisure. So, Tara is a good dog. I concur. All right, so let's go back and let's go down the other path now. Let's wander the streets like hoodlums. Here's the thing, your weirdest and best adventures have happened to you when you've decided to be spontaneous and just let shit happen. Adventures and coolness are both hard things to plan. So what are you suggesting, that we just... wander? Her derisive tone makes you hesitate, but, well, yes, that's exactly what you're suggesting. Alright, here's Bookworm's random science fact. Random science fact? Carcinization is an example of convergent evolution in which a crustacean evolves into a crab-like form from a non-crab-like form. The term was introduced into evolutionary biology by L.A. Borodale, who described it as one of the many attempts of nature to evolve a crab. Is this So is this basically a random science fact about car cat? <laughs> is that what this is? Well, thank you for the random science fact, Bookworm, our resident mad biologist. Wait, that's exactly what you're suggesting. Dry gives you a long, considering look. You hold your breath, then she shrugs. Okay, whatever, sure. Not like I have anything better to do. Let's just go. It was appropriate. Timely. Timely, timely science fact, Bookworm. You meander through the well-maintained Cerulean streets, heading downtown. This seems like a good opportunity to get to know your new potential friend, so you start by asking her some fairly simple questions. Ugh. How am I? Gee, I don't know. I'm forbidden to leave the stupid caverns as a jade, and as a jade blood, all I have to look forward to is a life of being forbidden to do things. How do you think I am? Okay, you try to walk you try to walk that one back a little. Sounds like Daria is unsatisfied with the Jade Blood setup. That's one way to put it. You could also say that I'm unsatisfied with like the whole setup of my species. You've been here for a while now. Don't tell me you haven't noticed that every part of our society is transparent bullshit. You glance around, because Daria is right. You've been around for a while, and that means you know enough to know that if the wrong people overheard this kind of talk, you'd both get cold on the spot. But everyone here seems distracted by their own nonsense. Cautiously, you can see that, yeah, you've noticed a certain bullshit aroma. Yeah, it all stinks. No one, ha no one has any kind of real future except for the highest of the high bloods. And actually, I've heard that things pretty much suck for them, too. Some might say that Purple Bloods are the most disprivileged class of them all. You're just going to continue to not comment on that one. Instead, you point out that being a Jade Blood, Daria has a purpose beyond just growing up to become fodder in the Imperial Army. Like you've heard, like you've heard other trolls mention. Surely that counts as a real future? Uh, don't get me started. Suffice to say that I'm not exactly hype about the purpose that I supposedly have. More like the purpose that was arbitrarily assigned to me. But it's not like I have a choice. And rebelling in any sort of real way would put me in danger of a culling. Life here is pretty much just hopeless. Damn. You wish you had a good counter-argument. 
You want to give her some words of comfort, but what can you even say? Dariah's right. Shit's grim. At least you're honest. Thanks for not bullshitting me. You know, Lynera said you were good to talk to you about real stuff. I guess she was right. That's... huh. You're surprised that Lynera is going around talking about you, saying positive things even, but you're more surprised that Dariah is bringing her up in a non-derisive context. You didn't know that Dariah and Lynera were close? Uh, no, gross. I hate Lynera. And not in a romantic way. <laughs> or, well... Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Dariah looks embarrassed and flustered and also pissed at you. At least you've gotten the subject away from now how hopeless everything is, but still, you don't want this friendship to sour. Oh, whoops. As you're scanning your useless brain for a tactile subject change, you're saved by the footsteps of a new troll approaching. Yay, Tizius! I love Tizius. Tizius is one of my favorites. And as luck would have it, you know this troll. It's Tizius, which makes sense because your meandering has taken you and Dariah close to Tizius' favorite book hive. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Never mind, I don't even need to ask. You're obviously you're obviously making friends with this jade blood. Searching for some dumb shit to do, no doubt. Don't let me keep you. Tizus looks just as exhausted as you remember. You don't want her to go just yet because it's been a while since you've seen her, and you're always eager for an opportunity to catch up with a friend, especially one of the less murderous ones. <laughs> then you notice Dariah eyeing Tizus' mug of unidentifiable liquid, and an idea occurs to you. Oh yeah, something related to Tizus? Yeah, put it on Discord, Twink. You get excited, bouncing a little on the balls of your feet as you introduce Tizius and Dariah to each other. You explain to Tizius with a meaningful look that you that you hope she'll interpret correctly, that you and Dariah were just conversing about the more unjust aspects of Alternian society and how hopeless everything seems to be. What do you mean, the more unjust aspects? Does Alternian have as does Alternian society have aspects that are not unjust? I'm sweeps into studying our legal system, and I haven't found any. Dry makes a muffled sound that could be a laugh. You make your meaningful look more meaningful. Doesn't Tizius remember that conversation she had with you about justice and the shitty system? The importance of possibly futile work to try and improve things someday? Pissing? Tizius squints at you, and then takes a long slurp from her mug. Right. Yeah, I remember. You wave your hands around. Now we're talking. Tizius is one of the few friends you've made that seemed to not only notice that shit was fucked, but wanted to dedicate herself to unfucking the shit as much as she could. Of course, many of your dear friends try to make the world a little better in various clumsy, interpersonal, distinctly alternian ways. You think of Chixie striving for her own, mu striving for her music even when it puts pits her against high bloods. The baffling but sweet ways that Connell and Azdaja and Gallic and Tagora care for each other, and Father's commitment to political. Wait, why did you think of that guy? He's a total shill for the contest. <laughs> Wait, who's Father? I forget who Father is, or have we seen Father yet? I don't remember. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Oh right, Fazer Fazer was the uh, the grave digger character. Okay, got it. Oh yeah, and that that episode was weird because stuff like there's like a weird like reality and time shift that happened in the middle of that episode and like Foster's responses to the choices we had like just flipped mirror image so yeah that was a weird episode and maybe that's why I didn't remember it because it was just like too weird for me to recall exactly but now I now I know okay Foster.
So there were there were two realities with Fazer, like one where Fazer was explicitly against the contest, and one where Fazer was explicitly a shill for the contest. So it's weird that like, it's weird, but perhaps not weird that we're remembering here that Fazer was a complete shill for the contest when we have also seen another reality where Fazer was not a shill for the contest. Yeah, Fazer's identity got split. Things are. There are time sh there are time shenanigans. There are time shenanigans. Time and space and reality shenanigans going on here. Anyway, Tizius has a big picture mentality and a cause that she believes in, and the simple fact that she hasn't yet completely given up is inspiring. Dariah is struggling with feelings of despair, so maybe Tizius could talk to her about the work that she's been doing. What? No, I'm not struggling. It's whatever. I don't even care. Dariya kicks at the ground sulkily. Tizius looks looks her over, her eyes lingering on the jade symbol on her shirt and her spiky black jewelry, then sighs. Sure you don't care. I went through a phase of telling myself that too. I thought it would make it easier to deal, but nah. Tizius pauses for another mug slurp, and you think she might be enjoying the opportunity to monologue a little bit. Dariya huffs. The only thing that helps, and I'm not even sure that helps is the right word for it. Whoops, no, no, no. Is finding some things to work on in your own little corner. To try and make shit a little less f- But there's nothing I can do in my corner. It's pointless to pretend otherwise. And that goes for everyone, like, this whole system is designed to help high blood stamp out dissent in every corner. One troll can't do anything against something like that. Tizius's eyebrow twitches as she stares at Daria, clearly peeved at being interrupted. Uh-oh, this could be going better. Well, no shit. What do you take me for? I'm not saying that it takes standing- all it takes is standing up and fighting for- Ooh, that's right, or... Um... Things stupid like that. That's obviously a surefire... Way... To get culled. Well then, what are you saying? How can you even know what whatever pit... How can you even know what whatever piddly little action you're taking will change anything? I can't tell you the future, dumbass. No one can give you a guarantee that... Any kind of action taken will be ultimately effective. You have to decide for yourself that it's worth it to try anyway. Why would you think it's worth it when everything around us confirms that nothing will ever change? I can't believe you're calling me a dumbass when that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Tizius looks like she's about ready to throw the contents of her mug in Dariah's face. Knowing trolls, she'd probably follow up with the mug itself. This is not the conversation you'd hoped for at all. You step in before things can get any more heated. You tell Tizius that you're sorry and that you didn't flag her down just so that her ideas could get shit on. You turn to Dariah, who is staring at both of you with a defiant look on her face and a stubborn set to her jaw. This kid, she's just so dead set on rebelling against anyone who tries to tell her anything with even the faintest whiff of authority. You really thought you really thought that maybe all that attitude could be channeled into something productive that would also help her feel better and possibly even give her a sense of purpose. You're not mad, just disappointed. Ugh. Don't give me that look, okay? I was just stating my opinion. But I guess I could have been less of a bone bulge about it. You're pleasantly surprised that Daria more or less apologized. Tizius looks mollified too. This shit just makes me so angry. Angry and sad and helpless. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself when I really have to think about it. Bingo, unfortunately. I feel the same way. I don't think there's any getting around the helplessness, but... What I was trying to say is that working on something that might help fix things someday makes that feeling a little less powerful. So what you're saying is that it's just about making yourself feel better? 
Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. I believe I'm working on things that might affect change someday, even if I'm not around to see it. But also, yeah, most of the time it helps me sleep at night too. You can tell Daria is a bit disappointed by this. Like, she doesn't trust that political rebellion can go hand in hand with making the rebels feel good about themselves. You point out that whether or not Tizius feels good about her work doesn't make the work itself any less effective. This is before the planet was destroyed in the Sagrub session and the society wasn't better then, so we know they'll fail unless it's an alternate reality. Maybe a doomed timeline? Perhaps, who knows? I mean, who can really say? Time and space shenanigans and reality shenanigans. These are all things that we know to be true about the Homesuck universe. Yeah, in the end, the universe doesn't care about how I feel. I'm just one troll trying to do the right thing. Or at least the okay thing. For its own sake, even if it might ultimately be futile. What the fuck else are we gonna do on this bitch of an Alternia? You've got me there. I'm bored all the time and there really isn't anything cool to do down in the caverns. I guess during the downtime in my training I could, I don't know, help you out maybe. Not that I have anything to offer other than the book hive and the jade cloisters. Access to that might really help with my research actually. <clears throat> Give me your number and we can talk. Is it just your imagination or does Tizius look a smidgen less tired? The bags under her eyes less baggy and her back a little straighter. And you think the corners of Daria's lips might be very slightly quirked up. Daria turns her possibly a smile from Tizius to you. This was cool, I guess. Or at least not so bad. But I don't know if it counts as something cool. So, I guess we could keep hanging out until more shit happens. You know Daria well enough by now to recognize this for the ringing endorsement that it is. You're about to happily agree when Tizius pipes up. I'm just heading home from studying, but I'm not tired yet. You're tired all the time, Tizius. If you wanted a third wheel to drag along... Hey! Three-way friendship combo bob victory! Yay! Huzzah!